Welcome back to another week of BB and Weekly News. I'm Hannah Ferro. And I'm Jimena Garcia. On this week's edition of BB and Weekly News, Annie Talbert will be discussing the scarcity of substitute teachers in our schools and nationwide. Shasta Hope will be spotlighting some community heroes. Sage Steckline will be catching us up on Beaver basketball, and Delaney France will be giving us this weekend's weather. Let's take it to Annie Talbert to learn more about the substitute shortage in our schools. The clang of lockers, the bustle of students and teachers in the hall. For many, this is a familiar scene, but a shortage within the education system is affecting the learning process. Substitute teachers are essential to keep schools running, but lately there's been a nationwide substitute shortage. I talked to Mr. Rumford, Scott City Schools District Superintendent, to find out how the substitute shortage is affecting Scott City Schools. This is my ninth year here, and I feel like we've had somewhat of an issue all nine years. It's been more extreme the last Three. The biggest concern I have is the continuation of, of con instruction, uh, the continuation of the academic process for students. And so we want to try to keep it to maintain as best we can. Mr. Rumford explained what the current status of the need for subs is and how the district is attempting to fix the problem. Our, our status is still, we have a, a high need for substitute teachers. Um, really, we have a high need for substitute, uh, substitute positions in all over the district, so paraprofessionals, um, maybe sometimes even office or a nurse, um, even substitute bus drivers are necessary. Okay, really, we've, we focus on two areas. First is increasing salary. Um, and that comes uh, with a little bit of a uh, concern uh, when, the, when the number of, of uh, substitutes necessary is, is increases as well too. So um, we've, we've got a limited budget that we can use for substitute teaching. So if we increase the, the, the pay per day um, and we also increase the total number of days necessary, then our budget runs out uh, a lot sooner. And so that's a little bit of a, a concern, but uh, we have increased a little bit and we'll continue to uh, try to do that as best we can. The other thing uh, we've done is just really reached out and asked people uh, kind of a, 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 a pled to the uh, to the, our patrons in, in town to, to see if they would help. So we've reached out to local businesses to uh, see if there's any consideration for um, giving uh, paid time off to their employees to help us substitute. And I know a few people have been able to do that or they have a, have a day off and they said, I'll commit my one day off to being available to substitute. So that's been helpful as well. I asked substitutes how the so sub shortage is affecting them as well. I am at school more when since we are lacking in subs in the high school. I don't do the elementary school. And there's some at the elementary that won't come to the high school. So when you have an event, if you have basketball, wrestling, and cheerleaders all gone, you have coaches and you have um, parents of kids who are participating. So that's when you have the big influx of teachers gone and the ones in the elementary school, they aren't gonna come over here. And if the same thing happens at the elementary school, well, I'm not gonna go over there. So that's what leads to shortage of subs. I'm busier than what I thought I wanted to be. I retired after teaching 40 years and thought I'd work two or three days a week and I'm working four and five days a week to help the school out because they are so short on help. The substitute shortage is affecting all aspects of education. To learn more, I talked to Luisa Esparza, the middle school secretary. It really puts a bind on us here. Um, sometimes we're scavenging for subs in the morning and um, we have to have like the principal's cover, we have to pull up um, teacher staff in order to cover rooms and we take away from para time to have to cover rooms um, especially on Mondays and Fridays that's when it really really affects our days because there there's hardly any subs available for those 
Mondays and Fridays. The rest of the week, uh, it seems to be okay, but um, Mondays and Fridays is really where we see the hit on the shortage. If anybody's really encouraged to go and apply, it's really fun and um, I'll make sure that you guys are treated well if you guys would like to come and apply and be part of the middle school, elementary school, high school, I know would appreciate it too. To all the substitute teachers, thank you for all that you do. For BBN, I'm Annie Talbert. Thank you, Annie. In Scott City, we are fortunate to have so many supporters. Shasta Hope will be spotlighting some of our community heroes. Scott Community is so blessed to have amazing volunteers to help capture special moments in students' high school careers. These people have played an influential role in supporting Scott City Beavers for years, and they are what make our community so special. While there are many people who deserve recognition, I've interviewed Adam Kadavy, voice of the Beavers, for Mix 94.5. Kadevi gives play-by-play -play over the radio for many sporting events. He also volunteers his time at many other school and community events. Uh, yeah, how long have I done this? Well, this is my 14th year in Scott City. I've been doing uh, uh, full-time about 19 years, and I actually helped out a little bit in college with uh, another station in uh, Goodland, uh, doing actually uh, area game of the week for football, and then some uh, Goodland Cowboy basketball and Calgary basketball, did, so it's been a little over 20 years. Uh, just, uh, I've always had excitement for it uh, when I was a kid and decided I, this is where I want to go. And, and so, you know, I did the, did the radio in college and so that really sparked it and he really continued my interest and, and getting to know people and uh, really enjoying the game. Uh, the, the games, I should say, the multiple sports is really what got me going. Just the uh, interaction of uh, going to the ball games and uh, interaction with the, the student athletes and all the kids and just and the coaches, of course. I, I enjoy working with the coaches as well. It's, it's, it's fun and, I mean, covering Scott City, man, you can't go wrong with that. Still, Jackson Rumford, showtime! He slams it home! 44-29! Timeout, Scott City! Oh, my! This is Scott City football. Well, I also, I, I work in uh, sales uh, for a company, uh, voice tracking uh, on the 94.5. I also, uh, see, I help out with uh, uh, entrepreneurship uh, class in the high school here. Um, just uh, a lot of uh, the, uh, I help out with the school with the uh, Reality U. Yeah, I do a yeah, MC, a PA uh, for quite a few events in town and uh, yeah, like, some of the events at the fort, the fair, and also uh, at the uh, spring livestock show in town. The run uh, that they, the basketball and football and wrestling had in probably 2011 to 2015, and even 2018, 2019, and then also covering state track. Uh, Scott City's boys, uh, the only team in 3A to score over 100 points in state track meet. The fun, fun uh, community here in ta uh, Scott City, and you know, I don't know, it, this is a great place to to be and just the interaction people are always great and just the camaraderie. I also spoke with Marcia Matthews, a volunteer photographer, about her experiences taking photos for many Scossity events. Matthews has been volunteering for about 20 years. What got me started was when my son was a freshman I discovered that kids like to have their pictures taken and that's what got it started. What makes it worthwhile is when I go to a basketball game and I haven't been able to go to very many this year and Mackenzie sees me and she turns around, <laughs> they're warming up and she turns around and waves at me. She grabs Brooke and her and Brooke look at me and then the other girls see so they come running in and so I've got four girls down there waving at me during warm-ups. All the state championships were big. It was like we went so often in basketball that it was like a family reunion every year and I was the door greeter taking pictures. My life around the school calendar and then I fit in what I can fit in and I try to give people pictures sometimes. 
800 and some pictures at the fall ball. This was my biggest ball ever. And then when I sorted them out, I had, I think, 194 envelopes. That's big. Thank you, Mr. Kadevi and Ms. Matthews for your time and dedication to Scott Community High School and our community. It is people like you who make Scott Community a great place to be. For BBN, I'm Shasta Hope. Thanks, Shasta. Thank you to Adam and Marcia for everything you do. We'll be back after this break. SCHS Kindness Project is a student-led club dedicated to promoting anti-bullying and spreading kindness throughout the community. They have been making statements at Scott Community Schools these last few months by teaching students and teachers the value of kindness. Anyone is welcome to join the Kindness Project, so join today. It's not too late. True belonging doesn't require us to change who we are. It requires us to be who we are. SCHS Kindness Project. Welcome back to BBN Weekly News. Sage Steckline is going to be catching us up on Beaver basketball. <laughs> Beavers basketball has reached the halfway point, and I recently spoke with members of the team to get some insight on how the season has been so far and what's to come. Last week, the teams competed in the annual Sterling Tournament. Um, the team did uh, pretty well at the Sterling Tournament. We opened off strong, uh, beating lines by um, quite a few points. Um, the second game was a little setback against Southeast Esseline. Kind of lost it in the first quarter, but after that, uh, we played pretty decently and uh, kept it uh, close points-wise um, the rest of the game. Um, and then our third game was against Sterling. And uh, we played a really good game, uh, sent it to overtime. Jackson Rumford hit uh, some clutch free throws, sent us to overtime. But uh, unfortunately, we cannot pull through. But I'd say that was a pretty good game for us. Played very well, well-rounded. Uh, I was very impressed with how we competed as far as a team, where they were kind of double-teaming me and Erica. It was really, I was really glad to see that the rest of the teammates kind of stepped up and played their own role. Both teams have seen their fair share of success. Despite some down games, they both have a 6-7 and seven record and are looking to improve. It has definitely went by really fast and we have seen lots of improvements and we're finally getting to the point where everybody's kind of settled in with each other and we're actually playing together as a team. The first half of the season has um, been pretty good. We started off uh, really hot and uh, we slowed down a little bit, but in all it is, it's been the best first half of the season I've been a part of um, in my three years of playing varsity, so it's been pretty good. The latter half of the season will see conference play increase with the Beavers trying to keep up with competitive GWAC teams as they will see multiple statewide ranked teams. Conference play is definitely harder for us because our league is very, very challenging. I think there's only like three schools that haven't had a player signed to play at the higher level. And so like looking back at it, like we're probably one of the toughest leagues in Kansas. Um, you know, it's a lot more exciting, a lot more intense than the first half of the season. So we're going to go in and we're going to give it all we have to beat these teams, um, mostly because we need to, to um, get a good ranking for sub-state, but uh, it's just a different atmosphere this half of the season. As the season continues, expectations only get higher and higher for these teams, and they don't plan on backing down. Looking to improve on um, my turnovers and shot selection. I want to make sure that I'm getting the best shot I can, and uh, of course that starts with not turning over the ball, so we still have the ball to shoot. Finishing better around the basket as far as me. And then as the team goes, I just want to see us keep improving and grow together as a team. Basketball season is always a great time at SCHS for both the athletes and the community as a whole. With less than four home games left, make sure you get out and support your fellow Beavers. With that, for BBN, I'm Sage Steckline. Thank you, Sage. If you're not able to make it to the game, you can watch from anywhere on the Beaver Broadcasting Network on YouTube. We might be in for a chilly weekend. Delaney France has this weekend's weather. Thanks, ladies. The Beavers are back with more dropping temperatures for this weekend's weather. Today, the weather for Scott City, Kansas is a high of 40 and a low of 15. Saturday, the weather will continue to drop with temperatures of a high of 30 and a low of 3. Sunday, you can expect a high of 18 and a low of 0. It is possible we might get a little snow Sunday evening into Monday morning with a 30% chance. Have a great weekend, stay warm, and for BBN News, I'm Delaney France. Thanks, Delaney. Make sure to stay warm this weekend. 
Thank you for watching the BBN Weekly News. I'm Hannah Ferro. And I'm Jimena Garcia. Tune in every Friday for the latest news from SCHS. See you next week.